Well, I think it's uh, it's 12 o'clock and our scheduled time to begin uh, this webinar. I'd like to welcome you to the uh, second webinar in our spring 2017 farm management uh, webinar series. Uh, this series is, is a part of our overall farm financial management uh, efforts uh, here at Oklahoma State University uh, in cooperation with the Farm Service Agency. Uh, and this effort includes uh, uh, not only this series of webinars, but a newly developed website of farm management uh, resources, which includes uh, videos and a lot of supplementary information on a wide uh, variety of farm management topics. That website you can access at agecon, A-G-E-C-O-N, dot okstate, dot edu, forward slash, E farm management. Uh, it's it's available for anyone for free. Uh, however, those needing FSA borrower training can utilize these resources to complete complete that training by completing a, a set of required educational modules. Uh, there's a small fee of uh, of course associated with uh, the administration of that. On a related note, uh, our IFMAPS one-on-one -on -one uh, financial management assistance is available for a fee, again, to anyone, but we do have some limited uh, uh, resources available to some of the participants in the FSA borrower training program uh, that has been uh, provided by a grant that we received that's only available for a limited time. So if you have a need and also need the uh, borrower training or have some folks that you work with that are in that situation, let us know fairly quickly by contacting uh, Brent, that would be uh, Brent Ladd, at uh, telephone 405-744-6159. With that uh, brief overview of, uh, of kind of our, our overall project, um, I want to introduce today's webinar, uh, which is the Crop Market Outlook webinar. Uh, and to present that, our crop marketing specialist, Dr. Kim Anderson, who probably needs no introduction to most of you on, on uh, attending the webinar today. Uh, so Dr. Anderson, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, thank, uh, thanks Rod. I'll spend uh, most of the, the time on, uh, on wheat. However, the uh, final slide I will have uh, my harvest price uh, projections and what the market is offering right now for wheat, canola, corn, so soybeans and sorghum. Um, if you, uh, you you hear a lot of talk and a, a lot of time spent on the uh, the high price of the U.S. dollar, and uh, as shown on this uh, chart, uh, the, the the dollar index. Now these are this is a weekly chart, so each uh, vertical line there uh, represents a week. Uh, the the point I want to make here is is that you know, it starts in April of 12 and it wallers around until you get into June of 14. And it, and that average during that uh, 12 and 13 and early 14 time period was about 82 or an index of 82 for the dollar. Uh, on June of 14, it was, it was down around uh, 80 for an index. And then you saw it in July, uh, August, September, October, November, and by January of 15, it had increased up to about a 96, or about a 19% increase. Now, what I want you to remember as we go to uh, the next few slides is this flat time period before June of 14, the 19% increase from uh, June of 14 to uh, about January of 15, then it wallering around between, oh, around 93, and in 99 until you get right there on the right hand side where we had that last increase up to 104. Right now that index is about uh, 101. Uh, the total increase from 80 to, uh, 20, to 104 was about 22 percent. I think that average through there is about 80, 83 or 84. So you had a 25 percent increase and it's backed off just a little bit. Now if you will look at the uh, Kansas City wheat futures prices, again, this is a weekly chart. 
Uh, it also starts in April at 12 and, and does uh, uh, 13, 14. What I want you to note is, is that uh, uh, vertical line there shows you June of 2014. And you had that futures price going from right around $9 down to $6. In other words, you had about a 33% price decline. And during that same period, your dollar index was essentially unchanged. And then remember your dollar index from June of 14 down into uh, the 16 time period, you got a, another big decline. That's where you had the increase in the dollar. But you, all, you had about a 25% increase in the dollar. But see, you had uh, prices going from $9 down to 6 with no change. And then they went from about oh, somewhere in the $6, $7 range down to $4. In other words, we got another third percent. And about 25% of this last change in the wheat price oh, is partially due to that increase in the dollar. Now, if you uh, look at cash prices, or if you overlay these two charts, you've got your wheat prices coming, you know, starting down in 12, and really about December 12, and falling down into to, uh, July of 16, and then your index flat, then you can see the big increase in the, the price. Where they cross here, well, you'd, you'd already had that decline. And the point I want to make is, is that dollar index does impact our export prices and does, has impacted our wheat price, but there's a lot more going on in this market besides the dollar index. If you uh, uh, look at uh, going to corn now, uh, the uh, U.S. corn situation here, starting uh, with production in uh, 2010, 11, 12, you notice that the production was increasing over time. Uh, we had the record in 2016. And also note on this that I have the USDA Ag Forum Outlook uh, per, uh, estimates that came out last week. Uh, what we're going to look at is that uh, corn ending stocks went from right at a billion bushels to over two billion bushels, and that our price went from in the upper six dollar range down to three forty. Looking into seventeen, and my numbers are a little lower for corn production. I've got about thirteen point eight, thirteen point nine billion bushels. USDA came out with fourteen one. Uh, they've got consumption at 14.2. Uh, my uh, estimate's just a little lower than that. Both of us came out with ending stocks over 2 billion bushels. And they're uh, projecting the price to be essentially the same as last year. So that, that tells us that our corn prices next year. Now, corn, U.S. corn uh, production uh, and U.S. corn prices are still determined mostly by what's going on in the United States. Uh, you will have some impact from Argentina, Brazil, and, and other corn producing countries. But the major price uh, determinant for the corn market is the U.S. market. And so with corn prices staying in the 350 range, that says that our feed costs next year are probably going to be about the same. But it also tells me that we're not going to see uh, additional wheat moving into the feed market. We'll have more than enough corn for ethanol production for domestic use and for our feed use. And so that's, that's the, the points and the lesson I want to get out of the corn market. And you look at the corn prices again. We go back, and it's about very close to what we saw in wheat. August, September of 2012 fell off to, to October of 15, and then corn prices, since we had the large uh, uh, production since we had ending stocks over 1.5 billion and up around the 2 billion range, corn prices have stayed between 350 and 4, or if you really want to get technical, between $3 and $4.50 on, on the board. Now let's, uh, let's go to wheat. Now, the USDA released estimates for the 2017-18 marketing year for U.S. wheat. Uh, there are 
Uh, I haven't really seen any hard estimates or you know published estimates of uh, of the world uh, wheat situation and world wheat production for 2017. Uh, these are uh, these are basically my estimates of, from talking to different analysts. And we had, uh, you'll notice that world production, you go back to 2010, it was a record 24 billion bushels. You go back to uh, 2009, it was 22. Uh, that was a record. And I want you to note the record in 10, a record in 11, a record in 13, 14, 15, and 16. And so this world wheat production, a record every year, is why the ending stocks went from 7.3 up to 9.1 billion, and it's why our, the big reason that our prices have continued to decline. Uh, you look at uh, world wheat production, I've got it at 26.7 uh, billion bushels. Uh, this is 800 uh, eight, uh, million bushel decline. The majority of that, at least uh, uh, four. 100 million of that is a reduction of U.S. wheat production, and the other 400, I think, the world. I mean, if you if you look at 2016, it started in in the hard red winter wheat and the soft red winter wheat, the U.S. winter wheat uh, crop record yields. Uh, we went from record yields in the United States to record yields in Europe to record yields in in Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan. Just about, uh, you can go down to uh, Argentina had above average yield, uh, had above average yields in uh, Australia. We just had, a, well, we had a record crop with no more planted acres and less planted acres in the United States. Uh, we, we still had a record crop because of record yields last year. With those record yields came low protein. And so that's why we have a, a very, uh, big or very uh, high uh, protein premium right now. And we can talk about that in a little bit. But anyway, for, for this next year, I've got 26.7 billion in production. I got 26.7 billion in use. And we've got our ending stock staying at 9.1 billion bushels. And I want you to remember that ending stocks in 2013 in the world were 7.1 billion and that uh, the 16 and 17, you're, we're looking at the record high inning stocks and very little change. Uh, you can look at uh, U.S. production over the same time period. Now put that on here because if we put in the prices, you'll see that these price, U.S. average annual prices relate uh, more to what's going on in the world market with ending stocks and production than they are with U.S. ending stocks or production. Do U.S. ending stocks and production impact it? Yes. But the big price moves are caused by this world production and changes in world stocks. And, and that's an important point we need to remember as we move on down. Uh, looking at the, the 17 crop, now hard red winter, uh, your planted acres are USDA's uh, latest estimates. They are what uh, their survey numbers, so they're relatively good. So we see hard red winter wheat plantings going from 26.6 million last year to 23.3. Your total winter from 36 million to 32 million. The harvested acres, I'm just using the average over time. And so I estimated uh, hard red winter wheat uh, harvested acres at right at 18. A million acres. The yield at uh, we had yes uh, last year the record 49.5. The average is 38 or 39, so I put it at 40, which gives us uh, we had a billion bushel production last year. Production declining down to 716 million. A winter wheat uh, we can go through the same numbers 1 1.7 billion last year down to 1.3. All wheat is USDA's numbers. Uh, they, when I had mine over here, uh, I had like 1805. So uh, they came out relatively close. So I feel pretty good about my hard red, and my my total winter acres and production here. But we're going from last year's 2.3 billion to 1.8 billion, or essentially 
right at a 500 million bushel decline in, uh, in wheat production in the United States. If you put that in the uh, supply and demand estimates, uh, carrying over our ending stocks for supply uh, with 1.84 production, uh, consumption at uh, 2.2 billion, we're going to lower our ending stocks from 1.2 billion to 905 million. Now, the last time we were were in this 905, uh, well, we can go back to 10. We were at 862, and we were 570. At in 15, we had 976 with 489, and we've got less than 15 here. So we've got about 70 million bushels less wheat, and we've got a 60 cent lower price. And the reason is because the world ending stocks are not expected to change. So yes, we have less wheat in the United States, still well above average, but we've got excessive wheat in the world. And for this to go back up more in line with 15 here, is we're going to have to have a, a reduction in world ending stocks. You can see that again if I, you know, if you come back in here and put in U.S. production and world production, and I got 17 in here now, and the price put in the with this 9.1 billion right here is what is keeping this from being up in that, uh, you know, 480 or that higher price that we saw here in in 15. One other thing I want to point out is is that uh, in 2016, the U.S. average price is projected to be $3.80, and that's what it's averaged to date. Oklahoma's price is only averaged $3.13, or you've got a, uh, what, a, a $0.67. Cent. Oklahoma's price is averaging $0.67 cents less than the U.S. price. Uh, on average, over time, you can look at the 10-year average or the 5-year average, that's from 7 to 5 cents. Normally, the Oklahoma price average is from 7 to 5 cents less than the U.S. price. I think this reason this is at 67 cents, it's been as high as 80 cents below, is because of low protein and a lot of poor quality wheat in bunkers and in storage. Uh, you look at uh, this, right now the price between your hard red spring wheat on the futures contract and hard red winter wheat, and you've, you've got a, uh, about a $0.67 cent spread there. And that's, that's about what we're reflecting. And I think that's our protein premium right there. So uh, as you're looking at 17, remember USDA had 430 here. I put it at 480. Mm, I'm betting on lower production, but I'm also saying if we can if we can produce a test weight above 59 pounds, really above 60, and average protein at 11.6, I think we can have four dollar and eighty cents. I think we're gonna we're gonna gain back that 60 cents that that we're down now because of of relatively low protein. Uh, you've seen over the last couple of days the, the market sliding uh, 15 or 20 cents. That's because of the rain. I think the general consensus is, is we haven't put as much nitrogen fertilizer out as we, as, uh, we need. If we have uh, average or above average yields, I think we're going to have uh, relatively low protein. I think the market believes that uh, we won't have enough nitrogen in the soil to get protein in the wheat, and therefore uh, that discount will hold. If it, say it dries out, if yields are below average, I think the protein is, and we have some uh, good weather to fill the berries, I think the, the test weight and the protein will be relatively good. I think we're going to gain back part of that uh, 67 cent spread that, that we've got in the market that we shouldn't have and that that pricer could average, at least in Oklahoma, uh, uh, closer to this 480 than it would 430. 
Uh, just uh, for your information, you know, you go over this is the daily uh, prices uh, at Covington. Uh, you can go to your June of 14, right? At, and at June of 14, we were right at this average price. If you just average it from June 1 of 08 through current, it's $5.85. In June of 14, we're right at 585. We'd come down from nine. Right there's you uh, a 30% decline in prices uh, with no change in the dollar. And then you go from 585 down to below three or around three. Uh, there's you another 50%. 25% of that 50 is going to be the probably the dollar, and the other 25% is additional wheat on the market. If you have mean reversion, in other words, prices tend to revert back to the mean, the market adjusts, you just you produce less product, uh, you use more product because of the lower price, so prices tend to go back to the average. The question is, is what should this average price be? And I'd say 560 to 580, somewhere in this vicinity, is probably where prices should go back on the average. Or wheat. If you look at what the market's offering right now, uh, I've got the the for forward contract in wheat. These are elevator uh, posted bases. Uh, you've got about three dollars and ninety cents now for harvest uh, price for wheat. That was uh, at four dollars and ten cents two weeks ago. Uh, you can forward contract for corn uh, delivery at three thirty. Uh, that was uh, 350 two weeks ago. Sorghum at 305. It was 320 two weeks ago. Soybeans at 930. It was 980 two weeks ago. Cotton is held at 71, pretty stable. Uh, canola was at 710, and it's now at 660. I think uh, personally, I'm predicting a harvest price of 4 425. That's based on a good test weight and a good protein. Uh, corn, I'm going to go with what the market's got. Sorghum, what the market's got. Beans, uh, 930 may be high because if they're correct with uh, you know significantly lower uh, planted corn, uh, and in other words, a 4 million uh, uh, acre reduction of corn, uh, 2.5 million increase or 3 million increase in beans, uh, I think we could see this this bean price may be a little lower. Canola, uh, there's a shortage of oils. Uh, our canola crop's the next one to come on, so I'd say this this 660 may be a little low. It may be up closer to to seven. With that, uh, I think that uh, I'll mention that I keep talking about the protein premium. Uh, the difference between uh, 11 and, and a half and a 12 protein wheat now is about 50 cents. Between uh, 11 and a half and uh, and 13 is up around a dollar and a dime. I think I think quality is going to be a big determinant of, of what our our wheat price is at harvest irrespective of it, of what it is the producers or the areas that have a quality product the market is going to want to buy it at harvest so that they can have it on hand for use for blending and use later in the year. And with that, Rod, I'll, uh, I'll turn it back to you and answer any questions. Thank you, Kim. Uh, be sure and type uh, questions for Kim into the uh, chat box. We'll be around for a few seconds to uh, uh, respond to those. I uh, want to once again thank you for uh, participating in this uh, webinar, which is part of our, our broader uh, farm financial management effort that includes the webinar series as well as our website uh, and our materials that are available uh, both for use by the general public as well as uh, for use by those uh, needing FSA borrower training uh, completion. So I'd uh, like, to, like to point you to those resources, and you can find out more about them uh, at the website that is posted there uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the chat box. Um, would like to also remind you of some upcoming webinars uh, associated with this series. And while we're doing that, 
I'm going to ask uh, Brent to post the link to the survey for today's webinar. So before you log off, uh, I'd like for you to complete the brief survey at the link that's posted there in the in the chat box. Uh, but we do have a livestock market outlook webinar coming up at noon on March 14th. Uh, we have a uh, webinar focused on secession planning issues coming up on March 28th at noon. And we have a webinar focused on uh, leasing, uh, leasing rates, what's going on uh, in that market. And that webinar will be coming up on April 11th. Uh, so with that said, I'd like to thank you uh, again and uh, for, for participating in this webinar. Uh, this part of our part of our farm management uh, uh, effort here uh, jointly with uh, Department of Ag Economics here at OSU, as well as uh, with some help, uh, sponsorship help, and 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 help otherwise from the Farm Service Agency. So thank you, and let us know if we can be uh, be of any help to you.